Okay guys, got a treat for you today. Emerson is a friend that I met through the channel, but he lives here in Houston. A uh, very famous cardiologist as well, uh, but great audiophile and even more sophisticated than I even thought. This is my first visit to his home. He's a Bach owner and I'm here to help him with some uh, tweaking of the settings and DSP and whatnot. He wasn't a DSP guy originally, right? That's true. <laughs> yeah, but the Bach helped win him over. But what I want to showcase today, before we even get to the Bach stuff, is how amazing his equipment is. Um, this is not just spatial audio speakers that you see store-bought, and these are not store-bought amps. Even uh, you see a hollow made DAC, um, but there's a lot of customization here. So, Emerson, you want to walk through maybe the spatial modifications you've sure, done and how sure. unique those are? Yeah, so the, the these are the spatial audio X5s. And so they have Gaia two feet on them, which is helpful yeah. to drain. The isoacoustic guy. And actually the crossover um, in this I, we, I, is a problem because I think they had it crossed over at the, at the wrong frequency. And, um, and the components that come in the crossover actually are also uh, not necessarily the best. So what I've done with a friend of mine who's a, two friends of mine they're both are electrical engineers I'm just the the guy that does stuff I like to to do things um, is we really change the crossover so I have two options here I can run these full range with a full range crossover that's bespoke for the crossover frequency in these speakers which is uh, uh, 1500 Hertz or um, I can run them uh, through a passive crossover that we built that will just basically divide the frequencies in high and low. And then I put a, uh, there's a box here. You can see this is the external Yeah, let me crossover come around box. here and put on maybe the flash for people to see. Yeah, so this is, th this in, in this case, when we use this box, all this is is the connection silver wire going to the speak on. And then we have the, the silver wire going externally to the, to the drivers. So this is, the, here are the crossovers all get being done at line level, right uh, on the exit of the hollow may. And it, like I said, it's a passive crossover with four auto formers. Yeah, let me get a closer look at this piece. So it's kind of like a quasi active crossover, but you can also use it to just run. Yeah, so these are the high frequencies and the low, mm -hmm. and I can adjust each of them in terms of level independently. Okay. Um, and again, this is, it, it's a crossover made for these spatial speakers, and actually each of the amps has an input of 100K, which is actually the ending of the crossover uh, circuitry. Uh, so that this is pretty much bespoke for totally what I have customized here. and, and yeah. dialed in for the, the um, spatials. So yeah. certainly a next level yeah. type. Or like I said, then I can switch this box out for a full range box. It just has uh, uh, then we're, we're going to cross over inside the box and we've rebuilt the crossover with a uh, Litz inductor uh, for the lows and a one capacitor which is an ODAM 15 microfarad capacitor for the highs and a, a, uh, um, um, a speaker auto former, uh, speaker former, I guess they call it. And so that way I have the ability to attenuate the highs versus the low at the level of the crossover here. Right. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, non-DSP way of getting an active crossover and being able to tailor it after the fact. You're using auto formers and whatnot. And yeah, you're taking a lot of components out of the equation and then you're providing separate amps for each driver. Yeah, so uh, these amps are basically you see here, like this is a chassis of an ICO HF60 from the 19, late 1950s. And all we have really left over here is the, the output transformer, which is an Acrosound and at the time was really good. There's also some that you can get with Chicago standard uh, output transformers. And that's really the magic of the era, I think. If they were to do them today, the EPA would probably outlaw, outlaw some of the materials of how these <laughs> right. transformers are done. So uh, these are the mid, the mid and low uh, uh, amps, and basically this is a, it's a, it's a three-stage amp, it's a six CG7 and a six SN7 driving. Uh, KT, this is a uh, 
push-pull KT-150s, but they're operating in Class A. They're triode connected and there's zero feedback in this amp. Uh, this has both um, tube rectification for the input signal and there's actually hex fred, so solid state rectification for the high power output tubes. Um, and this is a, uh, uh, just an EdCore power transformer, but lots of inside here. There is a wealth of uh, new components. Uh, big uh, film caps. Okay. Um, no, there's one electrolytic in the beginning where you want some ESR. Otherwise, um, all the re resistors are either audio notes or um, naked Z foil resistors that are like you know expensive. Silver wire throughout, and just basically, you know, the very best components we can we can get. So, so these are about 15 watts or so? Or? So these, no, these are actually uh, 40 watts oh, 40 here in watts. Tri triode mode. Okay. Because these KT-150s are pretty, we're running at about 100. Um, and, and the, the so I, 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 we call these the big boys. Just and those a, drive the, uh, these drive the, the mid-range. Mid which have a sensitivity of 96 or 97. So they're right. pretty sensitive. They're very sensitive. And then, yeah. uh, doesn't the spatial have its own amp? And it has its own, it's got yeah. a plate amp in there. For these, okay. Yeah, so we're just feeding it the signal and it's doing the rest. Okay. And for the tweeter, we have these, I call these the black op amps. And so these are a two-stage amp. And all it is is a 6SN7, is just a VT231 RCA from World War II. They used to use these in radar, mm -hmm. and they sound really, really good. Um, and so this half of the amp is is all a uh, shunt regulated power supply. You can see the big chokes here. Uh, this is a Blackburn um, 5AR4 rectifier, and and so really a lot of care in in terms of the power. And this is the output stage again, a parallel push pull. These are AL3Ns. They're not very common tubes. They're they're only made by Philips. Uh, back in the day and they're extremely linear and just wonderful sounding tubes and the output transformer here is from a uh, first generation of the uh, Dynaco uh, uh, 70s this is Japanese made um, so uh, yeah basically most tube amps today this, aren't even near this, this is four quality. and a half watts yeah, yeah but all but all this has to do is drive Power at the AMT. 102 Sensitive sensitivity, tweeter, uh, yeah. Motion transformer. It probably it does. doesn't even use a watt hardly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the, and this, so it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going, you know, uh, now that I've got the Bach and and my M1 Mac Mini, and then that goes right. To the, the Bach Dax. is he's got the Bach for Mac, which comes with a Mac and an RME, um, and then we'll showcase that in a minute. You've got two carbon specials. Now people are going to say, why are they firing this way? And it brings up a point that we were just talking about. You had an expert come in here, Jim Smith, uh, who does a lot of measurement tools, and he, you still have one of the markings he did to get everything exactly symmetrical. But, you know, another thing that we looked at when we look at Bach measurements is that you cannot rely solely on exact measurements per a laser measure or tape measure because sound looks at your room your room may look symmetrical <laughs> you know and you may measure it to be exactly symmetrical and exactly centered but the other side of his wall is brick <laughs> the other side of these could be closets or empty your st sound will hit this wall different from that wall and that's why there is some you know little differences between left and right channel when we do in-ear measurements because even though you've got it perfectly centered and your chair is perfectly centered like some of these experts come in and do that's still a level that's not to the optimal level of understanding what's on the other side of the wall and so that's what we're going to do today and so and also symmetrically loading he's got four essentially four subs here because that's a sub driver basically yeah. on the spatial so he may at the end of the day we may move these and asymmetrically load the room differently to get a little bit flatter base than what his in-ear results are showing. But we'll get to that. Uh, that's part of why I'm out here today. But I want to showcase some of your other great gear. Let's take a, take a look at your turntable. Oh, well, yeah, this is uh, uh, Breitman Balance. That's really cool. Um, yeah, and uh, <laughs> by mistake, I, I played a record the other day, and we do a lot of... Um, my friend Joe Finnier, I guess he's gonna, he's a guy that does the transcriptions and all that. Yeah. Anyway, I put a record on and all of a sudden it sounds like outer space. 
So the stylus just basically <laughs> came off my A90 cartridge. So I have a new Verismo cartridge yeah. that I'm going to install now. But um, nice. But this is a nice turntable and I have a lamp. Um, like a 40 pound platter at least. Or... <laughs> yeah. And a uh, lamb photo stage, which you rarely see, and uh, some step up, some silver Lundahl step up transformers to substitute for the Jensen transformers that are okay, in there. Nice, um, yeah. And then that just goes. I have an auto former, um, again, this is another auto former volume control. Auto formers are as it's a discovery, and that's really Pat Cahalan in Colorado. He's an electronic engineer that used to run a, a tube company, still deals with big industrial kind of tube stuff but um auto formers transform instead of go the, the 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 excess going to heat it turns it into current yeah and, and i'm not i'm a doctor not an engineer but a, a, the the science makes a lot of sense well i mean um, steve mccormick started using that in his preamp designs it's to an extent and then bent uh was always doing auto formers it's been around but very few people can implement it. a lot of times it's just Implementation as well takes the cake, but you're doing it top notch here. I want to showcase to a lot of people that rarely see a citation. Oh. <laughs> you have to be in the hobby a long time to see, to know what one of these are, uh, and this is fully working, right? And you've oh, got yeah. another one. It sounds wonderful. The the again the key to the you know what Joe was always saying is like there's nothing new if you think about tube amplifiers. There's nothing new in developed, yeah. It's this is the same from the 1959. I mean, yeah. there's nothing different. Right. And um, so the the magic of these older uh, the older gear is the output transformer. They're, they're really right. magical sounding. And then if you get new circuitry, yeah, you can update the resistors, the other components, and and take it know, to another level on a relatively modest budget, and especially if you have efficient speakers which these spaces are very efficient very high quality a great way to get reference performance Exa yeah that's the key yeah one thing i didn't show here that but it's the thing you know it's, it's a lot of work jesus is i took angle iron and and just made a, a frame throughout the whole thing with these concrete screws that go through both sides just to make this more solid yeah because um, uh, i know spatials suffer from this much more than, than i mean not spatial us uh, Pure Audio Project suffers from it more than spatials, but the vibration caused by some of these big drivers, you can feel it in, in the cabinet. Yeah. And so you've actually reinforced it pretty strongly. Yeah, and actually the next step is to take like Duram, uh, Duramat. Uh, yeah, uh, the stuff you put Dynamat, in the car, Dynamat, yeah, I've got and, <laughs> and layer my, it all over. My friend yeah. Joe, he just basically has his, the whole back of the speakers is coated in dynamite, dynamite. and it gives you another quantum of improvement oh, sure. in terms of Absolutely. vibration control. Yeah, so. Because these are mechanical reproduction devices. <laughs> They're moving, and so you don't want them to be contaminating each other. Um, and then, also, we may be able to get away with turning the bass down on your spatial yes yeah, you know because turn, you have turn them off, and that that also reduces the amount of vibrations translated in the cabinet so there's a lot more sophistication to being an audiophile sometimes when you get to this level and he's demerson showcasing a lot of that here but let's look at your little secret room in the back oh, that you're yeah, showing me that's on. really cool <laughs> stuff because you and joe kind of put together your own amps like we've seen yeah joe is uh I got to go visit Joe's years. house at some point. Yeah, his visit will be next, but um, yeah, I can turn this one over. This, this is yeah, this was really impressive to see the but internals. Again, this is another HF60 chassis, and this is a Chicago standard output transformer, and that's that's and it's just a chassis. We clean it up. Everything else is new. Absolutely everything. This is actually just polished this and left it here, but this capacitor is not really working. So you can see here on the underside. Um, I'll just lay it down right here. So you can see here the um, the power side, and learn to use these uh, film caps instead of electrolytics. Mm -hmm. The ESR is like zero, and um, so knowing how to implement this, and so this all this side has power supply. You can see the chokes. There's chokes on the outside, on the inside. All these film caps, um, and then the input and here's you can see the input here uh, th uh, and this is all a, a series push pull regulated it takes a lot of tweaking to get it right uh, but once you do uh, it, it, it 
it sounds pretty good. And here we have actually my flex. These are the coupling caps, mm -hmm. which are made in Poland and are a bargain. Really, uh, we've tried. My flex. My, my, we tried all kinds. V caps sound really good too. All right. But the the difference is, let's say this is a hundred and fifty bucks, and a V cap will be like five six hundred bucks. Um, and actually, these might sound better. So, um, and all the wiring we you know we point buy. Point, yeah. I've got the recipe for that. Um, you get thirty two gauge soft annealed jewelry uh, silver. Jewelry and then grade you, silver. Yeah. You twist it in eight strands. Will give you, you know, um, twenty three gauge. Uh, 21 gauge wire and if you do 16 strands you get like 18 gauge wire and so this is all the wiring in here is all silver and actually I've put I found a special nail polish that you can put on it so it doesn't oxidize. Okay yeah that's yeah. right yeah a lot of yeah. uh, companies start doing it. So it's all point to point. Acoustic does that. You can yeah. see the resistors are niobium, tantalum. Uh, this, this is just the very best components that we can Very source. little remains from the original ICO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's basically the chassis you're using. Exactly. And the yeah. transformer, I guess. Uh, yeah, and, the, and maybe the, the, the fuse. The, yes, but it's, the fuse. Uh, it's not, I don't use fancy, fancy fuse, but it's a little better than a stock fuse. And, you know, Cardis uh, terminal posts, Furotec, um, you know, IEC plug. Uh, so, so if this know, was a commercial product, you know, people would put obscene price tags on this going through distributor, dealer markup, and the quality of parts, the amount of money you put in the part. Uh, you're going to find amps on today's market that don't have near <laughs> this level of wiring parts inside. Um, so kudos to you for finding a way to do this um, yourself in a, in a, you know, with the assistance of Joe and others and kind of taking it on yourself to improve legacy designs to make them modern and even better than current designs. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely not, I mean, I'm a, I'm good with my hands and, you know, uh, but, and I love doing this, but, um, the brains behind the operation, <laughs> I love to execute and Joe's a fantastic engineer, electrical engineer and Pat Cahalan comes up with these circuits and we're actually, we're coming up with a new amp that I kind of pushed him and I said, listen, because like this is an SET, uh, this is a Sun Valley, it's a kit. Yeah, let me take Japan. a look at this one. Yeah, this is a kit from Japan. That actually yeah, I've run really into good. the Sun Valley guy. Yeah. Big L-Rogs on it. Yeah, these are 845 L-Rogs, but it, all, it runs 211 and 845. You can run both. Okay. And to do that, you have to make certain compromises. It has an incredible amount of gain, which is actually too much. And so what Pat has come up with, he's really modified the circuits, and I'm going to do this modification. Joe's already done it, and um, and we're also changing the output transformer. We've got these Hashimoto transformers from from Japan, and uh, this this can just be made to sound absolutely amazing. Um, and as some of you remember from Stereophile about 25 years ago, Sam Telig was a pseudonym, but anyway, yeah, he would use uh, to do all the budget yeah, stuff. This a, yeah, this is a this is a Sun Audio. 2A3 amp, and it's again, Pat highly modified the circuit, but it's the again the, the secret sauce of these output transformers from Japan are unbelievable. So, yeah, yeah I know Joe wanted me to try one of these at one point on my geo research and extremes because they are similarly not quite as efficient but similar. And I think I could get away with at least trying, yeah. Uh, but yeah. It, I'm not a tube guy like in general, but this level of tube amps and this level of quality behind it i would definitely put in my system to try so yeah looking forward to bringing you guys joe's system and home because he did those longtime subscribers know he does the uh transcription of the uh, the vinyl two wow, digital high res. yeah and i did a video where i played for people and most people couldn't pick the <laughs> right you yeah, know which and, one was which and actually we do shoot out sometimes uh -huh. that we compare the 200 Gram 45 RPM, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And uh, anyway, archiving them now that you have high res, uh, you, you clean the record. And I have many. I think I'm going to sell them. You know, right. you buy the one step, whatever, you know, all the, the stuff associated with that. But you buy nice vinyl, you clean it ultrasonically, and then you re Rec record it once. And Properly, there's some, yeah. There's some uh, software called Isotope. It's like professional audio engineer software. Right. And basically, you're taking away the obvious ticks and pops. Yeah, the annoying the ticks and pops, yeah. But then you can also, and Joe will show this, you can get the baseline 
of the sound, like of the uh, when when the stylus is in the groove and you're hearing that before the music starts, yep, yep. you sub you get that right. you subtract. You can it take that out, out delete of the it. whole yeah. record. Right. So it, believe it or not, you it's and it sounds much better than the digital. We we keep you know comparing it, and so you get a a archived once in a lifetime copy of right. a fantastic LP forever. And what we basically always listen to, we're listening to LPs, yeah. but they're just all But they're, they're now they're archived, archived and you can play them in a playlist. Yeah. That's a great way. And quite frankly, when I was doing A-B testing on my own, it was easy to tell only when the actual real vinyl would have like ticks and pops. You know, so what's great is your, your well, Joe's uh, rips actually were superior in terms of lowering the noise floor and made it more obvious that it was, but qualitatively... You know, in terms of music, it was. I would say ninety yeah. percent of the time, it, you could just blindly A B A. Nobody You'll would care. You'll pick the vinyl yep. over the, and then, and he's got a lot of tapes too. And sometimes you transcribe the tapes, like tapes from nineteen sixty two, whatever. Right. I just had a Stravinsky that he transcribed. Stravinsky actually conducting his the, the Sacre Printemps himself. Okay. And that tape just sounds from the six it sounds spectacular yeah because a lot of uh, the difference between vinyl and digital is in the mastering <laughs> or some of these streaming services have low dynamic range have the provenance is not all there so that's where analog is superior but then you have the noise floor ticks and pops joe kind of takes the best of both worlds exactly. he allows you to rip it take out those things you've got the provenance of the better mastering um so yeah these are really high quality recordings that i Got, uh, he's taken it to to a science level, mm -hmm. uh, and he's very detail oriented. So, and this is something that seriously you can teach people to do. The right. software is well, you know, it's he's got a process that it can. But walk it's through. not rocket science, and I've done some. Uh, it just takes time because mm -hmm. um, you know you it's a labor of love. Yeah. But yeah, once you've got them digitized, and now you can put them in playlists and play them like you do with Rune. And forever, it's forever. A long time yeah, it's so great, and you can share them with people to a certain extent. You know, so uh, yeah, that's great. We're gonna have an interview with Joe and go to his house at some point. But now we're gonna uh, sit down, listen to Emerson Systems, and do a little tweaking. Pretty much, we'll take a look real quick at the uh, measurements on the Bach. I'll show people oh, yeah. that are, most people are familiar with my videos. But basically, you're given in-ear measurements that are left and right, black and red. Now, this is just crosstalk cancellation that the, the algorithm is doing. You don't really pay attention to that, although you just want to see general tracking left and right. says that your room treatments are treating the signal basically the same. Uh, but also you get frequency response left, right, and then you get impulse response. Very good impulse response. Very little hash or anything for any significant time after the initial impulse. Um, this part here, everybody has ear pinna effects. If you take the mics out of your ear and measure it like a normal microphone, this is normally totally flat for most people. But this is showing the in, the your ear pinna will raise this. Now what we want to do today is kind of even out the rest of this, either through moving the, the bass drivers, testing um, how he's measuring, and then potentially even using DSP, which does come with the, um, both we could use it in Rune if he's only using Rune, but there is a very extensive number of bands EQ that comes with the um, the Bach, and we can go in and do some modifications there and see at in the base level a lot of people say oh you can't boost your way out of dips and you can't impact the bass with dsp well i proved it with one of the most hardcore anti-dsp guys in terms of he doesn't use it that much jr in doing his swarm setup we were able to do it at my house and dsp sometimes does have a one-to-one -one correlation with the measurements in base, whether it's a dip or peak. So there's no generalizations. Those are primitive when people make those generalizations and assumptions. You have to try it. Every room is different, and as JR did, did say, every engagement he goes into, he learns that base does different things that he never thought was possible. There are no written rules, and 
you know, generalizations you can make with base for the most part. Every room, like I, I talked about, has different walls on the other side of your walls, and it just treats things so differently. That's why you want to have these tools, expertise, and experience to dial it in, and that's what we're going to start doing at least today. So more to come, guys. Mm -hmm.